What's up YouTube family, we've got some exciting news on the new PlayStation 4 model. A lot of people have been calling it the PlayStation 4K or the PlayStation 4.5, but internally it seems as if it's known as the PlayStation Neo, similar to how the Xbox One's codename was Xbox Durango. In any case, people have been speculating that PlayStation 4.5 or the PlayStation 4K has simply been a PlayStation that allows the playing of 4K Blu-rays or uh, 4K Netflix or even 4K games. We've also had speculation that it's going to be a console for the PlayStation VR where it doesn't need the VR breakout box, but we're going to break all this down and discuss these rumors. Now, none of this has been confirmed or denied by Sony or PlayStation yet. However, multiple reliable sources have confirmed details of the project for different websites on the internet, including Giant Bomb, who is very reliable and it's an awesome website. But without further ado, let's jump into this thing. The Neo will be more powerful than the PlayStation 4 in terms of GPU, CPU, and memory. It's going to have a higher clock speed than the original PS4, higher bandwidth on memory, and an improved GPU, of course. Apparently, there are notes that the hard drive in the PlayStation 4 and the Neo are the same. However, that could mean that they're the same in terms of capacity and not connection speed. I would assume that the Neo would have a solid state hard drive, but maybe not. Now, you're probably asking yourself, how are games going to take advantage of Neo's higher specs? Well, starting in October, every PlayStation 4 game is required to ship with both a base mode and a Neo mode. The base mode, of course, is going to be for the PlayStation 4, and the Neo mode, obviously, will be for the Neo. Now, before you get into a blood rage and take your pitchforks out, this is actually a good thing. When the PlayStation 4 was being developed in the years leading up to 2013, Sony put the best specs they could in the box for the price that they are setting it at. Hardware is evolving and changing at a breakneck speed. The technology that we have today is far more powerful than technology at the same price point in 2013 or 2012 or 2011. So you can either restrict developers to using 2012-2013 power all the way into 2020, or you can split a normal console generation's life cycle down the middle with a PlayStation 4.5, for example, which allows for the greater visual fidelity, greater resolution, more stable frame rate, or increased frame rate that you'd get with a new generation in the same generation without locking out owners of a PlayStation 4. This is really the best of both worlds because the gaming industry is no longer being held back by 2013 technology. And it's not even really 2013 technology because that's when it was released, that's not when it was being developed. Regardless, the gaming industry will not be held back by 2012, 2011 technology all the way into 2020 or 2021 when a new console generation would be released seven or eight years later. Now that we have both reason and understanding, let's recap what Neo Mode is. Starting in October, PlayStation 4 games are required to ship with a base mode and a Neo mode. Base mode is for PS4, Neo mode is for Neo, obviously. Neo mode allows for games to take advantage of the hardware spec upgrades, giving more stable frame rates, higher visual fidelity, and even greater resolution. Now, that doesn't mean Neo games are going to be necessarily 4K native. A lot of games are going to be 4K upscaled. And while Sony is giving developers a great degree of freedom on how they want to approach this, there's one thing that they're not flexing on one bit, and that's frame rate. The frame rate of games in Neo mode must meet or exceed the frame rate of those same games running on the PlayStation 4, which means they're not allowing developers to further increase visual fidelity beyond just the specs upgraded the console, but also by lowering the frame rate. That is not okay in Sony's eyes, and it was forbidden. If it hasn't already become apparent from what we've discussed, Sony does not want to segregate PlayStation 4 owners from Neo owners. PS4 and Neo will use the same online communities, the same PlayStation 4, and it will offer the same exact user experience. So don't expect to see any new UI or anything like that. And of course, all purchases that you make on the PlayStation 4 will be retained on the Neo and vice versa. The Neo and PlayStation 4 will share the same player bases. There will be no Neo exclusive games. Sony will not allow developers to separate Neo users from PS4 players. And developers cannot offer exclusive gameplay options or special unlockables or special achievements. 
Both systems will have the same features, except Neo Mode will allow for greater visual fidelity, an increased resolution, and possibly an increased frame rate, and that's it. In my opinion, this is completely fair, and Sony could not have handled this better. There is absolutely no reason in the world for PlayStation 4 owners to get upset by this. There will be no unfair advantages in multiplayer, there will be no special features that you'll be missing out on, it's really just an optional visual upgrade, the same as buying a Ultra HD player or an Ultra HD TV versus a 1080p HD TV. I'm not going to get angry because I bought 2012, 2011 hardware and developers are making games for my console but also games for an updated version of my console that look a little better. That's silly and it makes no sense. Interestingly enough, another ground which the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation Neo need to be equal is peripherals. So apparently, we're not going to see the PlayStation Neo being the go-to choice for PSVR. It looks like we'll still need the breakout box for PSVR. If you know what the breakout box is, the breakout box is basically what allows uh, the PlayStation's old hardware to run games at high enough frame rates, which VR requires. If frame rates dip too low in VR, it'll make you sick. Like, literally, it'll make you nauseous. As for the release date of the PlayStation Neo, we have no idea. Yes, developers are supposed to be making every PlayStation 4 game releasing in October onward compatible with the Neo with a Neo mode. That doesn't mean it's releasing in October because PlayStation is allowing developers to launch Neo-ready games before the Neo even releases. However, I'm thinking that we're going to see some news about the Neo at this coming E3. A question you might be asking yourself is, all right, if Every PlayStation 4 game coming out after October must have a compatible Neo mode. Does that mean previously released games will not be compatible with the Neo? It's up to the developer, is the answer. For instance, if Bethesda wanted to, they could release a patch that allows a Neo mode for Fallout 4, which hopefully they would because that's one of the games that is known to having issues with the PlayStation 4's outdated hardware. To summarize, I think that the PlayStation Neo is a fantastic step in the right direction from Sony, especially with all these restrictions that they're placing on developers that basically just allow the developers more freedom. This doesn't seem like it's some scheme to get more money. It's very fair between PlayStation owners, sorry, PlayStation 4 owners and Neo owners. It's really the same console, just a different flavor. Now, we've talked about the basics of the PlayStation Neo, but there's still a lot I want to talk about. This is a great thing for the gaming industry. Developers are no longer going to be restricted by 2012 or 2011 hardware. That is kind of ridiculous in this day and age. Now, I'm not saying that the PlayStation 4.5, PlayStation 4K, PlayStation Neo, whatever you want to call it, I'm not saying that it's going to be a success. In fact, the only way it's going to fail is not because it's a bad idea. It would be because consumers are stupid. And I'm, I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's true. You could have the best product in the world, but if they don't understand it, if they don't understand the reasoning, they're going to hate it. They're going to get mad and they're going to be confused. I mean, just look at what happened to the Wii U. Or look at Console Wars, the silliest damn thing that there ever was. I can also see PlayStation 4 users getting very, very, very angry about the fact that someone has a PlayStation that looks a little better than theirs. Even though it's a completely optional upgrade, doesn't really affect their gameplay. In fact, it doesn't aff affect their gameplay one bit. And hell, most of them probably wouldn't even notice the visual differences if they played for 30 minutes on the PlayStation 4 or the PlayStation Neo. It's different from PC gaming when you're sitting uh, like 12 inches away from the screen. Most people are sitting a couple feet away from their TV, and if they don't have a 4K TV, if they just have a 1080p TV sitting like 5 feet away, it's probably going to be negligible for the average consumer, but they'll get angry about it anyway. You know what? Maybe they'll get angry about it. I'm not going to lose all my faith in humanity and consumers. However, it does make me extremely nervous if this PlayStation Neo actually is going to come to fruition, which it most likely will. I'm extremely nervous at how it's going to be received. If there's one thing that's consistent with consumers, it's their lack of understanding technology and understanding choices by these large companies who are often looked at as the enemy or uh, <laughs> Hitler. Regardless, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it helpful or entertaining, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more news on the gaming industry and also daily live streams. But until next time, guys, have a good day and game massively.